Jesus said to his disciples, Be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. Then Peter said, Lord, is this parable meant for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, Who then is the faithful and prudent steward, whom the master will put in charge of his servants to distribute the food allowance at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on arrival finds doing so. Truly, I say to you, we will put in him in charge of all his property. But if that servant says to himself, My master is delayed in coming, and begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants to eat and drink and get drunk, then that, ma then that servant's master will come on an unexpected day and at an unknown hour and will punish the servant severely and assign him a place with the unfaithful. That servant who knew his master's will but did not make preparations nor act in accord with his will shall be beaten severely. And the servant who was ignorant of his master's will but acted in a way deserving of a severe beating shall be beaten only lightly. Much will be required of the person entrusted with more, and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. Brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As I reflected on this Gospel reading in relation to the topic or the theme that this Mass is, has been given to me, the theme that Mary as the person of respect, or the woman of respect that was that is the theme in this holy celebrations gathering in honor of Mary and in light of the theme I reflected in what way respect is being discussed or it is being presented also in our gospel reading and so I asked myself this question what is common between household owner whose house has been intruded by a thief and a servant who did not fulfill or who did not perform his role as the servant in a particular house to whom that house has been entrusted and of course the commonality is that of disrespect precisely because when a thief intrudes into someone's house he or she trespasses into the into that house in that way he disrespected or she disrespected the master's house the master's ownership and because of that if somebody shall be caught intruding into someone else's property then he shall also be punished in accordance with the law of the land and so to intrude into someone's property one disrespect but when one enters into someone's property with permission it's either because of friendship it's either because of close relationship there is in a sense a mutual respect that is being preserved or that is being elicited in that kind of relationship so respect precisely because of this mutual trust between somebody who has been invited to come into someone's home and not intrude into someone's home. And so what is also can be discerned in the unfaithful servant when he disobeyed or when he did not fulfill his role as a servant when he beats the maid servant and other servants of him, it is also a sign of disrespect to the function or to the role which he has been given to him and be precisely because of that it is also a kind of trespassing to the trust which has been bestowed on that particular servant whom the master has entrusted that kind of responsibility and in other words to entrust authority is also a sign that there is also a mutual respect that is being that is being preserved or that is being present in the relationship and because of that the master 
and the servant are respecting each other when they do not interfere in each other's role, each other's responsibility. So in that way, for example, the master can guide the maid servant of what he or she shall be doing, but never ever should he intervene or interfere in the very creativity of the servants to whom he entrusted that kind of responsibility. Because each one or each servant also has their own initiative, has their own has their own creativity that they can offer precisely because of the trust. Because if there is no trust, there is no respect also in the capacity or in the ability of the person to whom that responsibility has been given. And so there is this kind of mutual respect between the master and also the servant. And it is also very reasonable why the master shall also punish the servant to whom he is unfaithful or to whom he did not perform the task that he should be doing precisely because he is breaking the covenant or he is breaking the bond that is being preserved in that mutual relationship between the master and the servant. But in that way, respect actually is in the manner or on the level only of function. I am teaching Indian philosophy and as I read a lot of books, no, not only a lot, actually only three books because th those are the three books that I require to my students to read. As I read these three books, I've encountered this concept of Namaste or Namaska, which Indians usually do when they meet other people or when they meet friends or they meet their neighbors. They do these greetings to them, Namaste. They make the close their hands together as if in prayer and then they make a slight bow and they would say Namaste. And according to, to the book that I've read, it is that the greeting actually has a very spiritual dimension in a sense that the person doing the greeting is actually saying that my soul is actually greeting the other soul in the other person. So if in our gospel what is being presented is that of function, respect based on our function, I think the Indian way of or the Indian basis for respect is somehow very deep and religiously mystical in a sense that when one greets Namaste, one actually is greeting the spiritual dimension of the person. So Namaste, that is his nature. And because of that, it has a very deep and profound meaning to the person who is doing it. In a Christian tradition also, we are always and constantly reminded that God is always with us. And I think also that is the very ground of respect to one another. It is not based on function anymore of mutual service or mutual relationship, but rather it is actually the very identity that we have, that God indwells in us. And so in the Holy Eucharist, the priests actually it is Christ who says this word and the, praise, and the priest in, his, in Christ's name say it to the congregation and he says the Lord be with you and I think that is already something so profound as a profound greeting precisely because it reminds us that God is with us the Lord is with you and the response of the congregation is completely is completely also profound precisely because it affirms that it is not only God who is present in us, but actually also His Spirit. His Spirit indwells in us, which is actually very profound in when we are going to understand it. And because of that, respect is not simply based on our function, based on the mutual, mutual preservation of trust, mutual preservation of our own common goal or common vision that we have as a community but rather it has a very deep and profound basis precisely because we are supposed to respect each other precisely because God dwells in us or the Spirit of God is in us just like when an Indian makes a greeting to another person, a master, 
in a sense that his respect is not simply for the sake of camaraderie or for brotherhood, but it is much more deeper. It has a mystical side, in a sense that one greets to the spiritual dimension or my spiritual dimension also is attuned with the spiritual dimension of the other person. And because of that, it is religiously profound in the same way as we are being reminded in the Christian tradition that God dwells in us and His Spirit also dwells in us, and which is also the very basis of respect, mutual respect for one another. In the Gospel of Luke, there is a constant phrase, or uh, actually it is the constant phrase, but actually two verses that I can resonate very well in the story of Mary. And it is also in that context that we can we can say that Mary is a woman of respect. And the phrase that in the Gospel of Luke says two times is that Mary kept everything in her heart, reflected the things that has happened, and he kept these things in her heart. But if we are going to look that look that phrase in its context, the first appearance of that phrase is, is during the, the birth of Jesus in the delivery of the Messiah and then the shepherds came and then the shepherds told to Mary and Joseph that a supernatural phenomenon occurred that there was this great light and there were angels and then afterwards it is said in the Gospel of Luke that Mary keep these things in her heart it is interesting that Mary did not keep actually the difficulties that she had. For example, the trouble of, of their journey because they, from Nazareth they have to go to, to Bethlehem for the census and it was a long journey. It is not being said that Mary treasured those things. It is not also being said there that Mary treasured the very inn that they have to, to be during the delivery. In other words, Mary did not complain precisely because I think the Gospel wants us to understand that they are not things worth treasuring. Precisely because what we keep in our hearts is what we treasure. And when we keep negative things in our heart, when we keep the difficulties, it is just that we treasure them. And because we treasure them, we are not giving self-respect to ourselves and i i realized that the second time that mary also kept everything in her heart is during the event where jesus was found in the temple and then jesus asked him do you know that i must be in the father's house and according to the story they did not understand what jesus meant and then Saint Luke continued that Jesus went down, went with him to going back to Nazareth, and then again that phrase, Jesus, uh, Mary kept these things in her heart. Mary kept the things that she didn't understand, particularly instances that has this kind of quality, kakilak kilabot, the quality of kakilak kilabot. Ang isang tao na may pakiramdam, kikilabutan siya kung ang isang bata na 12 years old ay nakikipag-usap sa mga matataas na tao sa lipunan. And Mary couldn't understand that event. In other words, it was a kakila... I do not know how to translate kakila-kilabot in English. But actually, kikilabutan ang isang tao kung nakikita niya ang isang bata sapagkat ibig sabihin nito, ang bata ang nariyan ay hindi pangkaraniwan. And in that way, Mary also respected the mysterious call of her, of her son. In other words, Mary did not impose herself on her son, but rather, he let her son to be following, to be fulfilling his role his mission which the father has entrusted to and Mary did not e understand everything that has happened but he kept everything in her heart interestingly in the gospel of Luke Mary did not keep anything negative in her heart actually 
if you are going to read the gospel very carefully, what he kept are the things that has religious significance in our life, those positive things, particularly, for example, the good news. Because the, during the delivery in the gospel of Luke, during the delivery of the birth of Jesus, Mary did not have any so, supernatural phenomenon. There was no angel. It was a normal and it was a normal delivery, just like anybody, a mother who would deliver her child. There was no angel. There was no light. There was no star. If you are going to look at very closely the Gospel of Luke, in other words, it was a plain and simple delivery in a very harsh situation. Nothing special. Nothing spectacular during the birth of the Messiah. It was only the the message or the good news which the shepherds told to Mary and to Joseph that made the delivery of Jesus very significant. And it is the good news from the shepherd that actually Mary treasured in her heart. It was not the struggle, it was not the difficulties. Precisely in that way, we can also sense that Mary has this profound sense of mystery in herself, a profound understanding of who he is. Although he could not explain it, he could not articulate it, but in a way, he has this powerful understanding. He sense a deep mystery that is, that is within her. And may we also have that kind of mystery in this life. When we forget that life is a mystery, when the other person is a big mystery, it is also in that understanding that we lose respect to one another. Precisely because we do not see anymore the mysteriousness of each one of us. We do not see anymore that each one is a gift that God has given to us. We do not see anymore that God dwells in us, that His Spirit is making His home in our heart.